Okay, we're here today with Pedro Martinez, who's a cloud solution architect with Microsoft. And we're going to get his input on uh, his experience with customers and designing data warehouses. So, Pedro, why don't you go ahead and tell us about yourself and what you do at Microsoft. Hey, Kirby. Uh, thanks for, for inviting me here. Um, so, my name is Pedro Martinez, and I'm a national senior cloud solution architect. Um, I've been with Microsoft for over three years now, and I've been working with uh, multiple customers in different industries like healthcare, retail, finance, and others. My focus is all around data, including um, data warehouse, ETL or ELT, big data, analytics, business intelligence, and other Azure data-related services. Excellent. So go ahead and uh, walk us through some common scenarios uh, that you've seen uh, with big data and advanced analytics, if you don't mind. Okay. So um, I'm going to talk today on, on the common big data and advanced analytics scenarios. Uh, we usually see three different scenarios. We see the modern data warehousing, the advanced analytics, and the real-time analytics. Uh, the modern data warehousing, we hear a lot from our customers. We want to integrate all of our data uh, from relational storage to flat file logs, and we want to put that into a, a format where my, my users can access all that data um, on a fast analysis and perform fast analysis. Um, we also hear our data warehouse is growing and we're running out of capacity and want to start looking at the cloud. We also hear a lot about we have some ETL or ELT processes that are taking too long to run. We want to use the power of the cloud to scale when needed. And then the other two are the advanced analytics, um, which is we want to um, add machine learning to our data warehouse and, and the real-time analytics we want to ingest streams of data. We want to get insights on real time. We want to analyze our data before it lands into a storage. But today, um, we're going to be focusing only on the modern data warehousing um, solution. On the modern data warehousing, we usually see three different canonical operations. Um, the first one is the load and ingest. Um, how to transfer the data and store that data. We also see the process operation and how to clean all of that data which and which service is recommended to, to store all this all this data. Is it on a cold storage on a hot or, or a hot storage? The serving the serving layer where you model and shape all of your data. Um, this is a common architecture we usually see with our customer that includes the three different canonical, canonical operations we just talked about. Um, on the data loading side, we have um, four different um, technologies or services that allows you to do the data loading. The first one is the Azure Data Factory, which is the, the data orchestration tool that allows you to schedule workloads or pipeline and call other Azure services on demand. It also has an integration runtime that allows you to lift and shift your SSIS packages. This will use the full power of the, of the cloud to scale and make sure your SSIS, SSIS packages are um, running in a, in a fast um, performance and had a really good performance. We have the Azure import, uh, Azure import export service that allows customers to ship those disks to our data centers. And um, the Azure Data Box is an appliance where you can save all of your data, and then we can import all of that into our data centers. We also have the APIs and CLI tools and UI tools where you can just drag and drop or um, the files, and we have um, the CLI commands that, that will help you just um, try to automate um, the data, the data loading. On the ingest storage, we have the data lake store and the Azure storage. When should you use data lake store or Azure storage? 
data lake store is optimized for analytics. So if you want, if you're constantly reading files from your storage, I would recommend to go to a data lake store. And the Azure storage is just a regular blob where where you can just store all of your data, but you can still access it, but it's not at the same performance as a data lake store. On the operational data, we have Cosmos DB, um, which is our NoSQL database. Uh, Cosmos DB speaks Mongo, Cassandra, Gremlin, um, Graph, and other technologies. And the Azure SQL database is our PaaS solution for SQL Server in Azure. And um, the data, on the data processing, we have Azure Databricks and HD Insights. We are um, seeing our customers choosing Azure Databricks uh, because it allows for auto scaling, and you can use you can bring your Python code or your Scala code, and then run those notebooks um, and orchestrate those from Data Factory. The, the good thing about Azure Databricks, it, it, it integrates really well with all, other um, Azure services. Same with HD Insights. Um, I usually see customers going with HD Insights, um, which is our uh, platform as a service for um, Hadoop. It's based on Hortonworks. And um, I, I see customers choosing HD Insights when um, their team has a Hadoop background. They want to use HBase, or they want to use Hive, or they want to use Spark. Um, I, that's that will be one of the difference. You know, if you have a team where they're all Hadoop experts, go with HD Insights. But if you want to just build notebooks with a um, with different um, languages, then you can use Azure Databricks. And then on the serving layer or the serving storage. Again, we have the Cosmos DB that also allows you to read um, really fast from your storage. And then we have Azure SQL Data Warehouse, which is our MPP um, database that allows you to ingest uh, large, large amounts of data into um, Data Warehouse using Polybase. So you can put a schema on read on top of your storage. and then you can do external tables and query that data from your data lake store or from your Azure storage. That would allow you to ingest really fast and then perform analysis or aggregations on top of that data and then serve that into your applications or your dashboards. And then at the end, we have Azure Analysis Services, which is our Tableau model um, that allows you to connect uh, or put a a layer on top of Azure SQL Data Warehouse. Um, usually we see Azure Analysis Services when customers, um, they want to start building um, a self-service business intelligence. They want to pre-aggregate that data. They want to add those calculations so they can easily drag and drop um, those fields on their dashboards. And Pedro, if someone says, hey, that's great, but I'm not, for the data processing area, I'm not comfortable with Scala, Python, some of the those more modern languages, or some of the uh, Apache ones, uh, using Hive, et cetera, but I, I want to continue using SSIS. Can I do that in the cloud? Yes, you can. Um, Azure Data Factory allows you to lift and shift your SSIS packages. So if, if you want to um, go with this modern data warehouse and, and reuse your investment in SSIS, you can lift and shift those SSIS packages into Data Factory, and then you can add compute to those, um, to those packages. So the processing or the time of execution, it will be way more faster than having them on-premises. Excellent. Well, Pedro, thanks so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know you're, you're typically uh, have a pretty busy week helping customers. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you, Kirby, for the invitation. All right. Have a great day.